guys, my name is Sid. Welcome to another vlog and today I want to talk to you guys about the Samsung Galaxy Fold. I was really looking forward to the Galaxy Fold. I mean, it's something new, it's something different. We're used to the smartphone form factor now and you know, honestly, smartphones have gotten kind of boring. You don't see that many innovative features happening in the cell phone space anymore because it's a pretty mature market now. But the Samsung Galaxy Fold was something really cool. If you saw my previous video where there were two of me, I was talking about the Samsung Galaxy Fold in that video as well. And that seemed like a really exciting product. I was actually thinking of picking one up and I had a couple of friends who were thinking of buying one as well. Super excited about it when it first came out because this was the first time any company was actually producing a foldable design display for mass market. I mean, that's pretty cool in itself. The second thing was that it seemed like the best of both worlds. You got your smartphone in the front, you open it up, it becomes like a tablet size device, great for media consumption, awesome to do work, multitasking, all that sounded awesome. I thought the screen in the front being really small with all that bezel around it didn't seem all that aesthetically pleasing, but once it opened up, with the notch and all, I think it still looked pretty cool. The other thing I liked about the Samsung design was that the screen seemed to be protected. When you close the device, it actually hides the foldable screen. Also, you don't compromise in terms of camera. They have six cameras in this device. So you got one on the front when it's closed. You got two cameras in the front when it's open and then you get three cameras in the back. So in terms of photography, I think this would have been an amazing device. It's still got the same image processing and the lenses that you get on the Samsung S10. And you know, Samsung has the amazing OLED technology. You get amazing deep blacks on the display. And I was quite curious to see what reviewers were gonna talk about when they first got their hands on the Samsung Galaxy Fold. Now, two days back, we started getting a bunch of reviews from the top reviewers. We got MKBHD, Unbox Therapy, John Rattinger. They all got review units and generally their impressions were pretty positive. Most of them said it was like a game-changing cell phone, the first of its kind. People had really good things to say about it. There was a small crease in the middle, which I was worried about, but they were saying that that looks fine when you're using it day to day. You don't really notice it. And it's something you get over kind of like the notch on the iPhone 10. But then yesterday, <laughs> started getting a bunch of news reports about the Galaxy Fold breaking. I mean, I knew that this was gonna be a first generation device and I knew that the technology is not gonna be perfect, but come on Samsung, if you're gonna release a product, it can't be something that breaks in two days of use. So when I further investigated this story, it seems like there's a protective layer on top of the display, which kind of holds the whole thing together and it kind of looks like it can be peeled off. These tech reviewers, MKBHD himself, actually peeled that off and that caused the display to malfunction. And I started peeling from that bottom where it's easiest to take a fingernail under the screen protector. So I start peeling it up and within a couple seconds, you start to realize like it's a little, it's more well glued than a normal screen protector. Um, and then by the time I get to an area the size of like a dime in like five seconds, the whole screen just goes black. Now, if you have a display that has a layer on top of it, which you can actually physically peel off, first of all, I don't think that's a very good design decision in the first place. Why would Samsung keep this layer so accessible that you can peel it off? The other thing I saw was that somebody actually had a bit or something go inside the screen and create a little bulge on it. Now, what they were saying is that they were using modeling clay to hold up the phone. So uh, at that point, some of that clay might have gone inside the phone and caused that bulge. But again, like you shouldn't have to worry about these kind of things with your cell phone, especially when it costs $2,000. It's 1980, that's almost $2,000 for this device, guys. It is a ridiculous price. And I was actually considering paying that for this phone, but I've definitely changed my mind now. I don't think it makes sense to buy a device that expensive when you know that the display has these issues. Samsung should have experimented more with this device or at least, you know, perfected it a little bit more before releasing it to the public. Now, Samsung saying that they're gonna put a warning on the box so that, you know, you know that you're not supposed to take that top layer off. But the fact that you can do it at all is kind of weird. If you can take it off with your finger, that means eventually with wear and tear, you're gonna kind of have it fraying from the sides of the screen, which is super unfortunate. I was extremely excited about this device. Now I'm just wondering whether this whole technology is not mature enough yet. So the other cool foldable device that's gonna be coming out very soon is the Huawei Mate X. Now, early impressions about that as well, 
seem positive. They've gone with a different style of doing the foldable phone. Their phone kind of folds on the outside, so the whole display is on the outside of the phone. I think actually that's a better implementation of uh, usability. I mean, you get the full display on the front and you don't need that secondary display that Samsung has. That's definitely a better way of doing things if it works. If Samsung's display, which is on the inside, is having these kind of issues, that means the Mate X is probably gonna have even more issues. Now, I'm not gonna dismiss that phone right away. I'm sure Huawei's gonna look into it quite a bit before they release it. That phone's gonna be two and a half thousand dollars, but uh, it, it really has kind of dampened my whole outlook on these new foldable devices. And I don't think I'm ready to spend $2,000 on a foldable smartphone just yet if the build quality is not up to the mark. But anyway guys, that was my quick rant on what I thought about this whole Galaxy Fold breaking thing. Uh, I think it's really sad for Samsung. I mean, they went all out to try and create a new kind of device. They were rushing to be first to market. and. This is the price you pay. I mean, this is gonna be a PR nightmare for Samsung. I really feel bad for the guys. They did try to innovate and create something new. This thing is probably gonna put a damper on a lot of people's expectations about the Fold. Maybe they might fix the issue by the time the actual phone is released, but I'm not gonna pre-order one right now. I'm gonna wait and watch. Anyway guys, that's it for the video. Let me know if you guys are thinking of buying a foldable smartphone. Do you think foldable smartphones are the future of this technology? Do you think Apple would ever make a foldable smartphone? Let me know in the comments below. Leave me a like if you like this video. Subscribe to watch more videos like this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.